This is a 2021 Karma GS-6L, a vehicle that was recently a Revaro or Revaro GT and ultimately started its life 10 years ago as the Fisker Karma, a company founded by former Aston Martin designer Henrik Fisker. It is a super sexy plug-in hybrid sedan with a BMW sourced range extending gasoline engine and two electric motors sending big power to the rear axle. Oh yeah, it's a thing. My name is Robin Warner, an experienced engineer and magazine editor, and I like things. I don't know. The GS-6L is the middle of three trims above the standard GS6, but beneath the GS6S. L stands for luxury, by the way, and S stands for sport. Among other things, the GS-6L comes standard with 21-inch wheels, and the GS-6S comes with 22-inch wheels standard. Powering the GS6L are two electric motors that combine to produce 536 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque, which is healthy. Those motors get fed electricity by a 28 kilowatt hour battery, as well as a turbocharged one and a half liter inline three cylinder engine that makes as much as 228 horsepower. Because the electric motors solely handle powering the driven wheels, they only need a single drive down gear transmission. Those driven wheels, by the way, are the rear wheels. The base price for the 2021 Karma GS-6L is $95,700 and my test car costs $109,100. For those that are interested, I included detailed specifications including dimensions, fuel economy, and options in the description. All right, let's take a look around the car. Well, here it is, the 2021 Karma GS-6L, and the L stands for luxury. This is effectively the Karma Revaro or Revaro GT from last year with a new name and a very different price tag. I'll talk about more of that in a second. But this is ultimately just an evolution of the Fisker Karma from 2012 and it is still just a gorgeous shape. And I really don't much care what they name it. Not only is this a beautiful shape, it's a shape that has staying power because this car is nearly 10 years old in terms of design and it's still has just great eye-grabbing features. Um, I really like this particular car. It has some carbon fiber bits in front, add a really nice element to it. I like the chromed out uh, bits in front. I'm a little more lukewarm on the logo itself, but you know, that is far from anything that's gonna keep me from liking the shape in general. The projector headlamps look really good, as do the 21 inch wheels and those are forged 21 inch wheels with blue six piston brake calipers from Brembo and cross drilled rotors. Not exactly sure why you'd need that much brake on a car that actually tries to recover a lot of the braking energy for battery recharging, but hey, whatever. Um, in case you forget, here it is, Karma GS6. DGS-6, excuse me, and let's just uh, take a moment to look at this. This is a very long, nearly 200 inches long, very low, just a little bit over 52 inches high, very wide car, yet it's not very big inside, and the shape of it just really kind of flows so nicely. You have this extremely long wheelbase, 124 plus inches, and you just get this like really like stretched out, long, swoopy kind of shape. Going to the back, you've got this nice subtle built-in spoiler into the bodywork here and some more nice little details here. I like this lower shine chrome finish uh, piece right there. And you'll also notice if you look low, there are no fake exhaust tips anywhere, which is a pet peeve of mine and generally the shape looks really good. Now, I'm not going underneath the car to show you where the exhaust really is, and that's because it's not in back. This is actually a fun little trick. See this little silver accent piece here? Well, if I stretch way over, there is the exhaust right there, and there's another one on the other side. How cool is that? Neat tricks like this. It's basically a NASCAR cup car. 
that happens to also be a plug-in hybrid so you know that's pretty cool and here's the other one right here just to show you that this is actually proper dual exhaust there it is right there so you have dual exhaust tips just behind the front wheels for the inline three-cylinder motor generator and that's pretty cool anyway we could look at the outside of this car for a long time and not get bored of it but let me show you inside and let's actually start from the back and head forward because this is a long car but it's not a big car inside and that includes trunk space you get all of five cubic feet of trunk space in this karma so no it's not huge inside but hey i don't think that's gonna keep anyone from getting it all right now none of the doors have traditional door handles they're all solenoid driven so that's what you hear clicking in. and here are the rear seats very cockpit oriented very comfortable and you get this nice like kind of built-in armrest from the high center console just continuing on but it's very pretty inside and you get heated seats powered windows stuff like that but the seat bottom is quite low my knees are bent quite a bit i'm five foot eleven and i am much more than a 90 degree angle back here and my head also is scraping the top of the roof so this is not the most comfortable place you would not want to have your friends in here for long trips maybe kids would be okay but you're starting to see the much more appropriate much better front row let's take a look at that and this is called Rebel Ceramic Interior. It's very pretty inside. It makes lovely sounds. And you've got an instrument cluster screen and a center console screen. We'll get to that in a sec. The door is also very nicely laid out. This is a button, again, not a handle. That's a button to control a solenoid. Get your pretty standard fare power seat controls here. Here, that's trunk opening, fuel door, and the parking brake. Stepping inside here is a better look at your instrument cluster screen and you do get paddles but these are not paddle shifters to change gears in a transmission because there effectively is no transmission those operate brake regen on the right and drive modes on the left turning the car on here is your 10.2 inch center console screen and up here you can see this is actually a little fun this is the lock and unlock for the doors hazard lights and there's your glove box because it's a box for gloves get it the car is beeping at me because i don't have my seat belt on but we're also in park so check it out you can see right here that i've got three drive modes they display right up there stealth sustain and sport and those basically control the way the powertrain operates and i'll talk about that more in a moment and then here you have brake gen right here and that gives you one two or three levels of brake gen it's not popping up here because again we're in park but it's basically like low medium high for brake gen what's interesting too is this center console screen controls a lot and i do mean a lot because if i go to vehicle if i want to adjust the side view mirrors just as an example i do that down here and here are my side view mirror controls and then obviously of course climate control cameras and all these kinds of things so my point is is that this is kind of similar to tesla in the sense that the vast majority of what you do you do on this screen right here now you've got this carbon fiber trim for nice little bing i mean again aesthetically this thing is an absolute win and um, in the front seats it's quite comfortable as well and by the way glove box glove box huh but the headliner is beautiful everything about this car just has really nice elegant shape to it there's just not a ton of space in here so all these little design elements are really cool as long as it's just you and one other passenger everything's good anyway Let's go for a drive. Hi everybody. Well, here it is, the 2021 
Karma GS-6L. Now, last year, effectively this same car would have been the Karma Revero or Revaro GT, and basically the company decided to change the name and also drop the price, which is really something I have to say, I'm surprised, perplexed, and ultimately impressed by this. So not really much different from this. The Revaro GT last year, this car would have been more than 150 grand. Now we're talking about less than 110 out the door. Now that's obviously still a lot of money, but it's interesting that they were able to make that big of a price drop without really effectively changing the car much. So I think that Karma has a lot of interesting things coming, like an all electric version of this, for example, without a range extender and you know other products coming forward. And they said that they plan on bringing the Revero name back. So it will be interesting to see exactly what that means in the future. But that brings up another point. This company, despite being very young, has a very interesting history despite being so young. So this started life as Fisker Automotive in 2007. And what we're driving is effectively the Fisker Karma, which came out as a 2012 model year car. And then in 2014, Fisker Automotive went bankrupt. And uh, this new Chinese auto parts company, and I'm, I'm apologizing because I'm almost certainly not pronouncing it correctly, but I've got Wang Xing Group. And Wang Xing Group, they are an auto parts supplier company. They bought the assets of Karma Automotive and the name of the car became the name of the brand and the name of the car became the Revero. And that came out in 2016. And then in 2018, they came out with the GT version of this car. And now for 2021, it is not any of those things. It is now the GS-6. And they claim that the electric only version of this car, when it comes out, is gonna start, and this is before destination and all the other things, is gonna start under $80,000. But ultimately, even though this car is built in California, it is owned by a Chinese company, Wang Xing. Right, super clear, right? Now that that's all cleared up, now we can move on. <laughs> Now, it's not exactly a Fisker Karma. Um, things have changed in the last nine years and that includes uh, the powertrain and a lot of the tech inside. But let's of course start with the powertrain. When the Fisker Karma first came out, it had a GM Ecotec two liter engine and a, um, a one, two, three battery system battery, which was like 21 kilowatt hours or something like that. This now has a 28 kilowatt battery and a BMW one and a half three cylinder engine, which sounds awfully familiar to the one and a half three cylinder engine that BMW put in the i8. And that is a turbocharged three cylinder engine. It makes 228 horsepower and 236 pound feet of torque in that i8. And Karma claims the same 228 horsepower here. So I'm going to assume that it's also the same 236 pound feet of torque. And that power is kind of sort of irrelevant in terms of when it makes peak power and those kinds of things because the only thing that engine does is turn a generator to produce electricity to power the two electric motors that actually drive this thing. That's right, as I said in the opening, you get two electric motors, both powering the rear axle, and they provide a combined 536 horsepower and 550 pound-feet of torque. And that means that despite this thing weighing well over 5,000 pounds, I'm estimating 5,300 pounds, that this has a better than 10 to one weight to power ratio, 9.9 .9 to one. That means it is also definitely not slow. Why don't I show you? All right, briefly slowing down and you're gonna hear the engine kick on and start climbing revs because this has launch control and there it comes and we're ready. Oh. <laughs> oh my. oh man, zero to 60 in four and a half seconds in a 5,300 pound sedan is not slow. And this is pure electricity that's doing all the work. 
The only thing that engine is doing is producing electricity. So you have to disassociate the engine running from um, the propulsion you're getting. And you get a lot of propulsion in this thing. Man, that is healthy. And it's cool. So you get these like, I'm gonna show you, uh, in the instrument cluster you get this kind of like drag launch kind of style start when it's warming up for launch control to be ready. So to use launch control you have to be in the sport driving mode and the sport is one of three driving modes. The others are stealth which is an EV only driving mode where you're relying on that 28 kilowatt hour battery pack to propel you along. The engine is not allowed to kick on. Then you have sustain which is kind of like a standard driving mode um, where the engine will run and keep things going but it's mainly there just to keep the battery levels at an okay place and then you have sport mode where the engine will run as hard as it needs to to provide maximum electricity to give you full power so we're talking about pretty standard uh, powertrain level drive mode things here this doesn't do any wild changes to the steering or the suspension or anything like that but I think that's appropriate for a car like this. You're talking about ultimately a very swoopy and sporty looking but luxury sedan. And you want to have control over how this car operates and the noise it makes. And the buyer of this car isn't typically going to be concerned about minute details in the suspension so the car handles just so. By the way, I should say, I've done a few launches without launch control, and it is plenty quick without launch control. That's not a huge difference. And in addition to holding up this really beautiful body, the platform of this car provides a good, solid structure for the suspension. You've got pretty darn decent ride and uh, comfort here. It's a bit on the firm side, but I actually like the compromises they made. I'm completely comfortable in this car, and the seats do a really good job of holding me in place, but also giving me plenty of comfort. You know, I can adjust the lumbar just as much as I need to, which is a nice feature to have. And I have uh, good bolstering, both upper and lower. I'm comfortable when I'm driving this car calmly or when I'm trying to be a bit more brisk. And that also means that you've got pretty darn decent handling. Again, let's factor in the length of this car, the wheelbase of this car. This is a long, long thing with um, a big amount of distance between the front and rear axle. And yet you've got good, sharp turn in and good steering response. The steering is fast, it's nicely weighted, and you get good response to your inputs. Now that's due to two things. Um, you've got a lot of weight, but you don't have a ton of weight on the front end. Remember, you've got this big battery pack and you've got the electric motors, everything's in back. You do have the engine in front, but it's only a one and a half liter engine. So it's really not that much weight on the front axle to, to burden the wheels as they turn. And the wheel, if the rack is fast, it's only two and a half turns lock to lock. And uh, because the battery pack is nice and big and heavy and low, the car's center of gravity is nice and low as well. That really helps give you good body control. So even when you're going hard into a corner and you're chucking around, you don't get a lot of body motion. It stays relatively flat. And um, the nice long wheelbase keeps it pretty darn stable too. Except these electric motors do have enough torque that you can power oversteer this car a little bit. It'll wiggle for you, which I really appreciate it. So chassis balance is actually better than I expected. What? wasn't better than expected was grip. You do have 245 front, 265 rear series tires, and they are Pirelli P0s, but they are Pirelli P0 Elect, which I have a feeling are lower rolling resistance for a slightly better fuel economy, and also not as much grip. Also, when it comes to that at the limit handling, it's really, it's competent, the steering is fast like I said, but the feel isn't as good as the best sports stands out there. If you start looking at an AMG or a BMW M or something from Porsche, the Karma GS6 definitely falls behind those cars in terms of feel and engagement and just like, you know, general 
like fluidity of all the movements of the chassis as you're going through a series of corners. So it's certainly not slow and it'll put a smile on your face, but it ultimately lacks that feeling of connectedness between the person and the machine. But again, I mean, I don't think that's what this car is here for. You know, this is ultimately a plug-in hybrid that happens to just look really, really good. This is a car that you don't pick because you want the best possible handling car on your favorite Canyon two lane. This is a car you pick because you think it's gorgeous and it's also reasonably economical as well. And when it comes to those hybrid things, it's a pretty darn solid choice. I showed you earlier, you've got the different drive modes, that's powertrain. You also have three different levels of brake regen, electric regen to recharge the battery. And level three is pretty darn good. You can almost one pedal drive this car if you're in the third and most serious uh, brake regen position. So, you know, as a hybrid, it's pretty darn functional. As a car, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and as long as you're in the front seat, it's plenty spacious as well. You've got a lot of good tech. You've got all the advanced driver assistance stuff, adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane change, lane keep, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All those things are here for you. And obviously this thing is fashionable and will likely remain fashionable for a long time because it's been fashionable for a long time. So don't buy this to be your next ultimate driver's car. Buy this because you think, just like everybody else, it's one of the prettiest cars on the road today. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribed to my channel. Those things really help me out a lot. Okay, goodbye. No, you're not making good engine sounds anymore, Benedict.